So I have a video in the works that required me to purchase a Nintendo 64, and long story short, it was actually more economical for me to import this unit from Japan than to buy one domestically on eBay, where I would have paid anywhere from $75 to $150. This thing here, which came in the original box with most of the cables and accessories that it originally shipped with, cost me less than $20, because Yahoo Auctions Japan is a godsend. Now look, I know what you're thinking, but Michael, getting this thing imported from Japan to the US would certainly cost more in shipping than you would pay for one of these things on eBay, and you're not wrong. But here's the thing, shopping on Yahoo Auctions Japan is a skill, okay? You gotta know the ins and outs. See, what you do is you buy multiple things you've been wanting to get for a while around the same time, and then get those individual packages consolidated into one shipment before it leaves the country. That way, it ends up costing much less in shipping for everything. I already talked about the Japan exclusive GameCube keyboard that I got in this shipment, but today it's all about the Nintendo 64 because I need to region unlock this thing so that it can play North American games. And that might sound involving, but it's actually incredibly easy. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So there's a couple of ways you can go about making a Nintendo 64 region free. And it's really easy because North America and Japan got the same hardware design for this thing, unlike with the Super Nintendo and NES that came prior. But there is one major difference and that has to do with the game cartridges themselves. So right here I've got a North American copy of Super Mario 64 and right here I have a Japanese copy of Pocket Monster Stadium. Now you probably look at these and go, okay, what's the difference? They're exactly the same, and you'd be right for the most part. But if we flip them over to the back here, you see there's these little cutouts near the bottom that are different between these two cartridges. And this was Nintendo's way of physically locking out a North American cartridge from fitting in a Japanese console and vice versa. Because these cutouts line up with notches on a bracket that's inside of the game cartridge slot. But like I've mentioned already, it's super easy to get around. One of the things you could do is just buy an external external adapter like the Hyperkin Hyperconvert uh, that you could just plug into the cartridge slot and then you could fit any of these games into it. It doesn't require any tools or disassembly. You could also use an old Game Shark if you've got one of those lying around because the top port you plug the game cartridge into doesn't have those lockout tabs. Another thing you could do is just swap the outer casings between these two cartridges, assuming you have a North American and Japanese game and that will solve the problem as well. But you'd have to do that for every game. Like if you have a North American console and you have a bunch of Japanese games you want to play on it, you have to swap out those cartridge uh, outer casings for each of the games, which could get a little time consuming. Another thing you could do if you want to take apart the console is just get a Dremel or something and cut off those tabs that are on the bracket in the cartridge slot, or you could do what we're going to do today and replace that bracket with a region-free one like this that has no tabs, which allows any game to fit and make contact with the actual cartridge slot in the console. This is a 3D printed thing, so you could just download the plans for this and 3D print it yourself if you have a 3D printer. I don't, so I bought this on eBay. Now, quick note for the Europeans in the audience, you could do all of this with a European console as well, but that alone won't let you play American or Japanese games because the N64 does have a lockout chip that prevents you from using PAL games on NTSC consoles and vice versa. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and just uh, open up this box here. I gotta say, I really like this packaging design. It's uh, super cool. So we'll take off the outer box part here and we'll get inside. We got the styrofoam container that houses everything. And we will go through everything that we've got in here. Like I said, most of this stuff is in here. We are missing the AV cable, unfortunately, but I do have a couple of those spare that I can use with this, no problem. Uh, so right here, we've got a couple of pieces of documentation. This right here, here. looks to be the health and safety thing uh, you can see you've got all it tells you not to do all this stuff don't transfer it from uh, extreme temperatures don't try to tamper with it in ways you shouldn't tamper with it uh, don't throw it into a fire all that good stuff you know things you definitely want to read over and make sure you're you're not going to do uh, with this console and right here we have the instruction manual I believe so this tells you, uh, well, of course, everything is in Japanese, but it tells you everything that's inside. Actually, I take back what I said about the display cable because I was translating this here and some of the text on the box. And uh, this 
unit here did not come with a display cable. You had to buy that separately. So uh, we do have all the cables that uh, would have come with this in here because we've got the power cable. That's the only one. But we do have some additional stuff too. We've got two of these uh, controller packs that you can see sold for 1,000 yen. Uh, so there you go. There's actually one of these in the uh, controller as well. So I'll, I'll show you that. We'll take out the controller. You've got it right there. And we've got the AC adapter. And we have, of course, the main events, the N64 itself. We'll slowly get that out of here if it wants to cooperate with us. And here it is. So now begins the disassembly process, which is actually pretty straightforward as well. There is a guide on iFixit if uh, anybody wants to follow along with that. If you're doing this and you'd rather have a text guide than a video guide. Not that this is really a guide per se, because this is my first time doing this as well. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is open up the memory expansion slot here, and we're going to, uh, or the cover for it anyway. Ways. And we have to, it says right here, do not remove jumper pack. So you know what that means, we got to remove it. Uh, so we're going to grab a tool like this here, a little spudger and try to just, uh, you know, get in here. All right, that was pretty straightforward. I was able to keep the sticker intact as well. I made sure to not damage that. So we can just put it right back in when we're done with it. Uh, so we'll, we'll set that aside for now. And uh, now we can flip the console over and remove all the screws. So you've got three screws up here. You've got uh, two down here, or actually three as well, because you got one in the center. So I've got my uh, iFixit uh, screwdriver here with the bit that we need. Uh, and we're just gonna start unscrewing those. And there we go, all the screws are removed. So now this top uh, plastic piece just comes off like that. And we don't have to mess with anything in here. All we have to do is mess with this bracket right here. And you can't really see it so well from this side, but on the other side of this bracket are the tabs that uh, prevent, in this case, North American games from fitting into the slot. So all we have to do is swap over to a Phillips screwdriver to remove these two screws. And now the bracket should just pop off like that. And we can get a closer look at this. You see there's the tabs on the inside. So all we have to do is uh, grab our replacement bracket here. And we're just going to slide that on like so and screw the screws back in. And that's all there is to it. So we just gotta grab the bottom portion of the console, flip it back over, put this on, and now we just gotta screw the six screws back into the bottom. And last but not least, we gotta put the jumper pack back in here and put the top plastic piece on. And that is all there is to it. So now I can put both Japanese games and North American games into the console and they fit without any issues. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and try it out, shall we? All right, so we've got the N64 hooked up to my lovely Symphonic CRT here. And we're gonna go ahead and pop in both these games and uh, play a little bit of them because why the heck not? So we'll start with Pocket Monster Stadium here, the Japanese game. So we'll pop it in, flick on the power switch, and there we go. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to read like anything, like any of the menus in this game, but uh, that'll just make it a lot more exciting for you guys. So. Uh, here we are. Now, by the way, I do have this console plugged into a step-down transformer, which steps down the 120 volt coming out of North American uh, electrical outlets and steps it down to 100 volt, which is what this console uh, is expecting, what the you know power supply is, is uh, designed for. I know some people will say that's not really necessary for a console like this, but I have it because I've got some things that it is absolutely necessary for, and it certainly doesn't hurt, so I've just got it uh, plugged into that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, press A here, and uh, well, I can read that, but I don't, I, I couldn't read what it's, uh, yeah, I can't read any of this here. Uh, I've never played Pokemon Stadium at all, um, so this will be rather interesting. We're, I, I would imagine we're not going to play very much of this game, but uh, okay, it's asking me a question, let's go with that. And okay, this looks like a stadium select. Uh, let's go with this one. Um, yeah, let's just do this. Versus computer. And okay. 
Oh, I think this is where you can choose your uh, opponent, maybe? Or your character, your starting lineup, I guess. Like, if I pick here... I'm guessing that's what that is. You know, all this is probably save data, by the way, too. Uh, yeah, no, that was me selecting the uh, computer, I believe. Uh, so they... <laughs> So, I've got three Pokemon, the computer has six Pokemon. Gee, I wonder who's gonna win this. Uh, and what do we got? Yeah, level, I, I have a level 18, a level 30, and a level 30, and the computer has, uh, all level 51s except for one that's a level 53. So yeah, this, I, there's no way I'm winning this game. Uh, so we gotta select our order here, we'll do that. And, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be a disaster. I'm assuming that said, Go Pikachu! Alright. Um... Okay. Sorry, Pikachu, you're gonna die. Like, pro <laughs> Oh, that did do damage. I don't even know what attack that was. Oh, he's gonna, like, completely destroy me, isn't he? Uh, yep. <laughs> In one move. Sorry, Pikachu. I'm sorry I put you through that. Alright, so Pikachu's dead. Uh, next up... Uh, I don't even remember what other Pokemon that I have in here. Snorlax. Okay. How, like... Okay, I'm guessing that... So I hit R here. Like, I'm trying to figure out what all these options are. I'm assuming one of these is, like, your attacks. Yeah, this is just turning into a Michael Struggles to Read Japanese video. Where it's like... <laughs> oh, I don't even think I... <laughs> I don't even think I selected a move. <laughs> so Snorlax wakes up, oh, he's all happy, and then he falls over and dies. Uh, meanwhile, the computer is still on, like, the first Pokemon. Oh, okay, okay, this is your move, this is your, your, your move, no, that's not it. I thought I just had this figured out. Is it B? I think, yeah. Oh, no, this is the swap Pokemon. Yeah, that's what that is, which I don't want to do. So, I'm assuming A is attack, L is to go back, and, yep, this is your move selection here. Okay. Wow, I figured that out. That shouldn't have taken that long, but whatever. Doesn't matter, because he's not gonna... <laughs> He's gonna die, like, instantly. Because there's absolutely no, uh... There's just no contest with this match. Rest in peace. Sorry, guys. Alright, I think that's enough for Pocket Monster Stadium. We'll go ahead and pop this out of here. Uh, yeah, that was a fun first time ever playing that. Uh, and, alright, now it's time for some Super Mario 64. It's been a while since I've played this game, that's for sure. So let's, uh, pop it in, turn it on here, and, uh, there we go. Yeah, something that I realized is, uh, I, I do need to clean off the, you know, contacts for these games and on the, uh, cartridge slot as well. It certainly wouldn't hurt. I probably should have done that while I had the thing taken apart, but whatever. It wasn't really that difficult to take apart at all, so uh, I, I can just do that again. Uh, and oh, look at that! We've got, yeah, we've got save data on here. So, uh, yeah, Mario A through D are all, uh, taken up. It looks like they got 110 stars on A and C, and, uh, 57 stars on B, and what is that, 17 on D? Uh... Wow, that is, uh, that's actually kind of cool. So, let's just hop into Mario A here. And, uh, man, it has, it has been a while since I've played Mario 64. So this definitely brings back some memories. Um, let's just hop into the castle here. Oh my gosh, that music. Holy cow, that really takes me back. Um... I'm, like, getting the urge to play Mario 64, but I'm, I'm going to contain it for the rest of this video because, I mean, this video is not about Mario 64. But that future video that I mentioned early on in this one is kind of about Mario 64. It is a part, it's, a, you know, the main reason why I bought all this stuff. Because, fun fact about me, I didn't have an N64 prior to this. I played Mario 64 more on the DS 
uh, that's that's where I first uh, you know discovered it and uh, you know played it. Um, I I played Smash on an N64 uh, at one of my friends' houses uh, when I was growing up because they had a, a, a N64 and uh, we did not. So I, uh, I I think Smash is like the only game that we ever really played. Though. Oh, there's Boo. Because you know it's like when you're with like when you're with your friends, you know it's like playing Mario 64 is like it's a it's a single player game, whereas Smash is like you can get up to four people. So it's like we would we would do that uh, pretty much every time that we were on his uh, N64. But uh, anyways, I digress. But let's uh, maybe hop into a level here. Let's go to Bomb on Battlefield and just kind of roam around for a bit before we end off the video. Uh, but yeah, feel free to speculate as to what you think this next video is about. I'm not going to, uh, really reveal much, but, uh, oh my gosh, th this really brings back memories, too. Especially this music, like, my gosh. It's, it's so fun, it's such a fun game. Oh, there's the, oh, wow, that was, that, that seemed like I should have gotten hit by him. Um... But yeah, I mean, you know, there you have it. That's that's Mario getting smacked in the face. But uh, that is how to really easily modify a Japanese or North American N64 to uh, play games from both North America and Japan. Uh, this will definitely come in handy if I start importing more uh, Japanese N64 games. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that's a good place to call. Let's just go ahead and uh, shut off the console here. That is... Uh, modifying my N64 to uh, to make it region free. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video, and if you want to get early access to my future episodes, I do have a Patreon that you can check out down below. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.